Hello, my friends. Time for another fantastic Revit tip. All right. There are many ways for you to annotate and thumb your projects, right? You can point at an object and just put a piece of text. Some firms use keynoting. Some firms use um, build a special annotation family that you can actually make a schedule of those annotation families and that works and um what else oh and ha, the one i want to talk about today since it came up a client asked me how best to use material tags so i'm going to make a quick video on material tags and the truth is is for most projects you know what there's no reason why we're not using material tags. You can get overly complicated in some of the other types of um, ways of doing it. But let's just, let me just show you how powerful material tags can be and how easy you can make yourself a schedule and to put it on your sheet. It's for notes, for annotation and notation in your project. All right, enough of that. Let me share my screen with you sharing my screen where am i oh there's my screen <laughs> i'm sharing it and i couldn't figure out where it went okay so here we go oh something i nearly forgot is that um i just want to let you guys know anybody that's watching this that there are if your firm if your company needs some revit training I've been doing this a long time and I can link in via Zoom and train a group of people at your firm from you know virtually. And so if you're interested, my contact information is on my website. So that's enough said. All right, so let's get to material tags. Here we go. I am going to here's the building that we're dealing with. This is our cute little architect's office. And you know, I've been threatening to expand this because it's quite a small space and we might need some more architects and we got to build make this bigger but I'm still using it so let's just work with it okay let's go to the plan view okay first floor plan and here it is and let's look at the south elevation which is the front of the building okay and there it is and let's just suppose you wanted to tag this with material tags okay and um and so I've got, just a sec, I've got a, uh, a bar across the top and I'm just going to move it. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> this is my elevation. I had it on light lines. So up here at the top, there's a button for thin lines, TLs, is a keyboard shortcut. This puts everything at a line weight one. And that's not how it's going to print. It When you toggle it like that, that's how it's going to print. So just be mindful of that. You might be able to... You're, if you're drawing little lines or putting objects right close to each other and you've got it on thin line mode, and you're like, wow, this looks great. Uh, untoggle that to see what it's going to print like. It might be just a mess. But back to, wait for it, material tags. If I click on, okay, let's annotate. And here it is, material tag. Okay, I'm going to put click on material tag. And... What? Wait for it. I have a material tag that I made, but let's just suppose I load one. So let's load the one that comes with Revit, the one that you get every time. And uh, so I'm going to go to mm -hmm, insert. And if you look across the top, you can hit load family and go get it off of your computer or your server if you have downloaded the content. But there's a new feature, Rachia, in 2025 for load Autodesk family. Now, if that was in 2024, I missed it. Okay, I just, I've been busy. I missed it. But let me click on this. Load Autodesk family. Click. Wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, so look at this. Let's just go to, it has every, you can look at different views. You can, I just want to show you this. You can see all annotation. There's all results. Look at this. You can go online and get families. 
There's doors and electrical and casework and plumbing, and it's all the stuff. You don't have to download all the content and put it all on your server somewhere. You can just get it from Autodesk as you need it. So I'm just going to come here to Annotation Objects, okay? And there's a lot to sift through. I'm looking for Material Tag, so I'm going to type up in the search, M-A-T for Material, and it just sits there until I hit Enter. Okay, so hit Enter, just a heads up. It doesn't automatically search. Look at that, Material Tag. So I'm going to click on Material Tag, and then down there at the bottom, it says Load. And it will load the material tag into your project. It's just so cool. So the truth is you don't have to download all your content unless you really want to and work offline. And you don't have to be connected to the internet. You can be anywhere. Okay, I've got the material tag now. And so what I'm going to do is type, um, I'm going to go to annotate now and click on material tag and move my face. Material tag, plain old material tag that everybody gets when they buy Revit. Okay, and here we go. I'm going to click on the top of this. One inch standing seam roof. What? That's pretty cool. I'll put it over there. And what's this? Brick veneer. Hey, that's pretty convenient having that there. Um, What's this? Precast concrete. All right, let me just put it over there. Okay, this is great and all, but you might notice, okay, first of all, I don't have a little um, arrowhead, so I'm going to move my face. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on it and go to edit type, and the, the arrowhead is set at none. And you know what, friends? I really like build dot 116th. Okay, I'm just saying, I'm going to hit okay, because look what it looks like. Is that sweet or what? You see that circle right there? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, so brick veneer, we, we've got the different objects. And now look, if you grab the end of your um, object here and move it to a new object, it's going to update. If you move it uh, right here, what's that? The metal gutter, iodized bronze. If I move it over to here, what do we got? Glass, okay? So it's picking up the material. So if you want to annotate your building and your, your project quickly, you can place these material tags on your elevations. You can place them on plan. You can place them in sections. What? Sections? Yes, look. Let me just open up this section that I've got going right through the building, okay? All right, it's a building section. Same thing, look at this. If I wanna put annotation on the building section, I can. So look at this, I'm gonna to go to material tag and I just zoom in here and I pick on that tippy object. There it is, standing seam metal roof, okay? And then I go a little, you gotta be tight here. Whoops, you gotta go, I picked the wrong object. I, I wanted to get the sheathing. So look, I picked the two by 12, which is that material. And I'm going to go right there, but you can, if you back off, you can see what it's getting. There we go. Three quarter inch plywood sheathing. So you, if you take the time <clears throat> to name your materials correctly, then this material tags work for you and for your section. If you come down, here's a section and I'm going to go material tag. Let's just go like, look at this. Okay, here is right there, a two by four wood soffit. Let me just put a, a um, and what is up underneath that? Oops, what is right there underneath that? Half inch exterior gypsum wallboard. Are you kidding me? And brick veneer. You see how quick this would be to annotate your project? <clears throat> this is um, wood, two by six wood stud. So. I'm just saying, friends, if you use material tags, you could be annotating your project quite quickly. Elevation, section, plan, details, everywhere that you go in your project, you can annotate. But let's go a little bit further. <clears throat> you might notice that this note is, I'm just going to pull it over here so that we can talk. Okay, this is, I'm gonna, this is a talking point. 
you might notice that it's putting it in the default one that comes with Revit is always coming in here centered. And nobody likes that because that's a little bit confusing. So wait for it. I'm going to hit edit family. And you can override the one that came with Revit. The material description is what it's pulling. We'll go look at that in a moment. But if you look over to the right, it is horizontal alignment set to center. And so you want to put it on the left. Left, justify your text. Always, always left, justify your text. Did I say that? Always left, justify your text. Even if you're putting the note on the far left of the building, you always left, justify your text. I'm just saying. So that's done. Okay. And we got our description here. If you wanted to wrap after every single word, you can jam it like this, okay? <clears throat> but if you pull this out further, then it gives it a chance to get your full description on there before it needs a new line. So that's up to you how far that is. So let's load this back in the project. And I'm not gonna save it right now. I'm just gonna load it in and overwrite. And so here's what we've got, okay? So now our text has it's sent, it's left justified and it has enough room to get most of our notes on there. Okay. Our mo notes, let's just make it smaller so I can prove to you what's going on. I'm going to come back here to the description and I'm going to truncate it a little shorter so that it forces it. Remember, every one of these is a different length for the different companies that you're, some people have two inches to work with, and some people have three inches to work with in their project, in their typical details. And so just set it for the right distance. And so I'm going to load in the project and close it. And here we go. It's going to truncate that one. See? Boop. No, it's not. I didn't push it far enough. Edit family. Da, 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 I didn't push it far enough. There. Okay, load into project, close. No, I just wanted to show you what the problem can be. Okay, so when it's a single line of text, the air, the line comes in right on the text, beautiful. But when it wraps, Revit doesn't have a fix for this yet, okay? Autodesk does not have a fix for this. And it will bring this in centered on however much text you have. So if you have 14 lines of text, you wouldn't, but let's just say you did. It's gonna bring it in in the middle. And so it's like, come on, if it's only one or two, some architecture firms say that line must be up on this one. It has to be on the one or the contractor cannot build it. He cannot build it unless it's lined up on the one. And so, and what I say is Revit has not fixed that yet. And that's why lots of people go to other methods that they have control over. You have, you have much more control when you go to building your own piece of annotation and you can force it to work off of that top letter. And I understand that. But if you're going to use material tags, currently you're stuck with it coming in at the middle. So some companies go with a number or a letter, which is really cool. You don't have to have words out here. You can keep your details very clean if you go with numbers. You could use the um, CSI numbering system. You could use, you know, master format numbering system. You could use one, two, three, four, five, ABC, doesn't matter. But I'm gonna show you how to do it if you wanted to. Because this, this right here can't do it. It's just bringing in words. And where's it getting the words? Didn't I tell you it was material description? Okay. So look at this. Um, let's go. Look at this. One inch standing seam metal roofing. Where is it getting that from? So if I go to manage my materials, get my face out of the way. Okay. And so right up here at the top, I'm going to go uh, roofing just as a, a search. Okay. Look at this. We got metal roofing. And if I click on right here, we've got identity graphics appearance okay graphics is how what color it's going to show on your project appearance is how it's going to render when you go to render it in um out um 
two different programs. Identity is where the information is coming from. The description is right here. Metal roofing. That's not the one we're using because it's a, so look, metal standing seam. When I click on that, there it is. Description, one inch standing seam metal roofing. Okay, make it wider here. So you can see it. So that's where it's pulling the information from. Roofing, metal standing seam, one inch standing seam metal roofing. Well, I wanted to pull a number or a letter instead of that description. So I gotta go, I need to go fix the annotation, the actual tag, okay? So if I pick it and I click up here, edit family, okay? It's right here in the middle of nowhere. I mean, you know, it's just floating in space. But in fact, let me hit VG and turn on all kinds of annotation stuff. So we could, there we go. There's the insertion point of the prod of this piece of text. Okay. So this description is coming in. I just want to put it right over here. Boom. Okay. So look at this. There's our material description. And that's what's going to show when it comes in. That's just, it always does that. So here's a way that you can make it show a number. Okay. Look at this or a letter, whatever you want. I'm going to hit um, create a label. I'm going to pop a label right there. And this is a new label. Wait for it. I'm going to put down the mark. Okay. Mark. Show the mark. And my example mark will be like M88, capital M88, because that's a big number. Boom. Okay. So there it is right there, M88. And let's put a box around it, like a hexagon. Create some lines. A uh, hexagon going up about that big. Okay, you guys can measure it and make it perfect if you want. But that is going to be my my material and my it's going to show it. Now, if I just send this back in the project, it's kind of a mess. It's not exactly what I want. Watch. I'm going to hit save just for fun. Material tag save, yeah. Overwrite, yeah, whatever. Okay. Load into project and close. Now, if I just did that, look at what these look like. Fuck. Well, that's not exactly what I wanted. I didn't want the tag and everything here crammed in your face. <clears throat> okay. So let's fix it. Edit family. This is kind of this is kind of cool. Okay, watch this. You can bring the material tag so that it's outside material description. Load into the project. Do you want to save it? Yeah. Now that's one way to fix it. Wait for it. Overwrite. Boom. So you can see. Okay. Hey, it looks like. Oh, do you see how that's clipping right there? These letters need to be transparent or edit family. Yeah, I want to, I want that tag to be transparent. Okay. That particular one doesn't need to be that big. It needs to be. Move my face. Uh, the label, edit type, dun, dun, dun. opaque. I'm going to make it transparent so that it doesn't interfere with my lines. Okay, that was just bothering me. Load into project and close, save yes, and overwrite yes. Oh, yeah, here we go. Hang in there. Okay, overwrite yes. Okay, so here we go. You can see a 13 is a 2 by 12. A, I mean, a 11 is a 2 by 12. A 13 is a 3 quarter inch plywood. You can see what these are, which is very cool. So that as you're placing them, you'd know that you're doing it right. So look at this, standing seam metal roof doesn't have one. So if I put a number in there, a one, let's just say standing seam metal roof, where did that one go? Let's go look. Go manage, materials. Do you see our standing seam metal roofing? Well, I'm gonna show you right there's where that went mark became a one i can set it to anything i want let's just say i want it to be a 99 okay and it updates boom it's a 99 so you can fix these either in your elevations or your plan let's go to the south elevation look this thing is showing a 99 one inch standing seam roof the brick veneer doesn't have a number so let's make it a number it's a two okay bam and the standing seam, actually, it's a uh, back to a whoop. Let's put that back. It's a two. Look, I get a warning. You got duplicates. Good. Thank you for the warning. Now that is a two. Now brick is a two. 
Standing seams of one, bricks of two, precast concrete is a three, okay? Three. Okay, so boom, boom, boom. You get to see what they are as you place them. But if you want the ability to turn those off, mm, here's how you do it. And then we'll be done for now. Okay, edit family. All right, so look at this. Material description, wait for it. That guy, when I highlight that description, over here, it says visible. There's a checkbox. That means it's always visible. But wouldn't it be cool to be able to turn that off? Hmm? So I am going to say, wait for it. Uh, the um, parameter, I'm going to, I clicked on the, oh, let me show you what I did. I went to the word visible and there's a checkbox. That means that's always visible. So if I keep going a little bit further, there's a little box on the far right. It's, that's how you associate a parameter to um, this, um, you associate a family parameter to it. So I'm going to click on it so that you can change it back in the project. So I'm going to make a new parameter and I'm going to call it show, wait, show um, text on slash off. There's, but that, that's good. Text on off. In fact, I don't need the word show. Text on off type parameter. I'm going to leave it as a type parameter. I'm going to say, okay. And okay. Okay. So now I, this object is now you'll notice that I can't mess with that checkbox. I have a, a family parameter to turn that on and off, <clears throat> but it's a type parameter. So they're all going to go off at the same time. So here we go. Save. Yes. 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 Load into project and close. Here we go. Wait for it. Overwrite the existing one. Now look. Wait for it. After I verify that everything looks cool and I know what I'm doing, I can pick on that and I can go to edit type and uncheck text on off. And look, they go off everywhere, everywhere in the world. So if I ever want to put another one, whether I'm going over here or I want another tag up here, um, you can put tags all over the place with this little hexagon. Do you see what I'm doing? And it'll pull the right information. And if you want to see, oh, it's like, what was that? I can't remember what one was. You can go back to edit type and turn them back on. And boom. Now you could have set that to an instance parameter so you can turn individual ones on and off if you want. Okay. But that's up to you. So I'm just letting you know how this works. Okay. It's pretty cool. And so I'm going to go um, turn them all off again. Whoops. Standing seam metal roof. Turn them all off. Boom. I'm going to go to my section. Boom. Look at that. So there we are with um, all of the annotation showing, boom, 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 of what's going on here. Really a good way to annotate your projects. But what if you wanted to put a chart somewhere that showed this? Oh, my gosh. What do I do? What? I don't know what to do. Okay, so here's what you got to do. You got to go to um, view and you go to schedules and you create a material takeoff, okay? And a material takeoff. Um, what things are. <laughs> Woo, good name, Mike. And this applies to um, it's, it's everything. Okay. So I'm going to go, it's everything in new construction. It's multi-category. So I'm gonna say, okay. And what you get over here is I don't, I, in my schedule, I don't want all the possible parameters in my project, but if I come down here, I can find material properties. So the materials description, remember, and the materials mark number, and I'll put that at the top. Material, mark number, material description. Boom. And so I get myself a little chart. And I will, okay, it lists every single object in my whole project. And it is a long list and a mess. And so I'm going to go fix that. Go over here. Look at this. Sorting and grouping. Don't show me every single one, please. Just sort them out by the mark number and go from there, okay? And after that, you can put them in order of description, but the mark number is going to be the most important. Boom. So look at this. Look what we got. 
<laughs> glass does not have anything associated with it, a number associated with it. So I could put like a four, okay? And it'll automatically go in order here. So anything that doesn't have a mark number yet will be a blank and you need to assign them. So I got number one is standing seam metal roof, two, brick veneer, three, blah, 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 all the way down. I've got two by four, wood soffit, two by six, wood stud. Every single thing in my project has a description that's accurate to what the thing is. And that takes a little bit of time for you to build. If you don't want something showing, if you don't ever plan on tagging something, like look down here, glass, air infiltra air space, air infiltration barrier, you can just write the word out, 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 out. Just give it the mark number of out. And then when you go to put a filter in, you can say, okay, I'd like to filter by the mark number, but it, they stay in this list if they do not contain, no, if they don't equal the word, whoop, it's at the bottom, out. Okay? If they say the word out in the name, uh, I mean, in the mark number, then they will not show up. Okay? So, I'm going to get my face out of the way so I can hit OK. And you'll notice that everything at the bottom disappeared. So, you can put this on a sheet and you'll have all of your numbers listed with um, all of the, um, this is a schedule. So you can put it on, I, I, wait, <clears throat> can't believe it. I haven't tested it. What if I wanted to put this on multiple sheets? Okay, let's go find out if I can do it. I'm going to go to my first floor plan. Let's just say, or, or I don't have any tags there. Let me go to my elevation. Building elevations, exterior elevations, and this one has east, north, south. Okay, here's my elevations. Get my face out of the way, guys. See it? Do you see my elevations? And I've got the tags right here, but people need to know what they are. So I need to put the schedule on this sheet. <sighs> this is going to be scary. Okay. Can't believe I'm showing this live. Multi category. Okay. Material takeoff, what things are. Okay, so there's my list. But let's go to a, um, let's go somewhere else. Let's go to the uh, first floor plan of this, okay? And if for some reason we had any tags here <clears throat> that we wanted to show, okay? Let's just go tag. Uh, I'm going to say material tag. This is kind of fun. Uh, where am I? Annotate material tag. You can tag things here. There's a number two. And there's a number nine, whatever. You guys can have fun with this, okay? So if I go back to my floor plan sheet, <clears throat> can I put this on there? Oh, yeah. Whew. You can put your, your list on multiple sheets. It's not, you don't have to make a new schedule for A. 101, A201. You can actually put that schedule onto multiple sheets if need be. Whew. I'm glad that worked because I wasn't sure that I hadn't even tested it. And so that's enough. I am going to uh, stop sharing. <clears throat> so that was your fantastic Revit tip for the day. I hope you use that. Material tags are so, so powerful. And you could be annotating your project so much quicker. You just have to go in and make sure each of the different objects that you are working with have the correct material assigned to them so it pulls the correct description and mark. I'm just saying. All right, that's enough for now. Until we meet again, happy, happy reveting. All right, talk to you guys later. Okay, bye-bye.